Hi guys, my name is Gwen and I'm your Jamboree consultant uh, for this party and hopefully for a while. And I wanted to quickly do an application video both to introduce myself to you as well as just to show you my way of applying my Jamboree. Um, there are lots of different ways to do it as you'll find if you go and check YouTube. Um, but I wanted to at least show you how I do it to give you a good head start into getting your product on as soon as you have it ordered and back at your house. So normally I would do this in person and do one on you, um, but since we are having an online party, I figured I, this is the next best thing. So here we go. Hello my friends. We're going to go over removal now. It's always uh, a lot easier to take them off than it is to put them on. Um, but I wanted to show you my favorite way because it doesn't involve any chemicals whatsoever. It's just a, a little bit of olive oil and a little bit of elbow grease. So here I'll show you how easy it is. So I have a little bowl of olive oil and my orange wood stick. And I'll tell you, it is important to only use this particular orange wood stick for this particular task. And um, the reason why is because, as we all know, oil is the enemy of jamberry. So we want to make sure to only use this particular orange wood stick for this particular purpose. Now, um, I just put these on maybe three days ago. I'm switching them out because I have a party this weekend that I wanted to have a specific camera here for. But you'll see that it's actually a little bit difficult for me to get this one off because I'm asking it to do something that we normally don't ask it to do, which is come off um, before it's time. So, but you'll see, I don't know if you can see up close, but I'm just working this underneath the edge of the jam, see how it's lifting really nicely without any chemicals, it's just olive oil. So you can see it coming up there, I'm trying to get it in the right spot. There we go. So I'm just going to keep working on that. Um, usually it only takes me less than a minute to do each one when I'm yakking, chatting with you. Sometimes I have the eye of the tiger when I'm doing my jams because it's a very short period of time between when my child goes to bed and when I need to go to bed. So I'm into things that go quickly. Ta-da! There you go. So jam came off in one nice piece. Um, my finger is there. It still has a little bit of that silver sheen to it. And again, that's really mostly because I'm taking them off before their time. Um, I have taken off this particular finish before with olive oil and it's come right off, no problems. So it's a little, you know, weird that I'm taking them off early. So this will come off really easily just with a little bit of scraping or also um, with just a little bit of acetone nail polish remover. It's not hard at all. And um, Another reason why this might be sticking just a little bit better is because I actually use the Jamberry Smoothing Base Coat underneath all of my jams. And when I do that, then it sticks really, really well. So I'm asking it to come off way before it's time. So anyway, so there you go. That's really quick and easy olive oil removal. Things we already have at home. You can see there's almost no olive oil in there at all. A tiny little bit. Don't need much at all. So. I've had, uh, heard that people have good luck with coconut oil as well, so if you have that around, um, you can always give that a try too. All right. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the actual application part of the Jamberry. Let me show you um, my nails really quick. I have prepped them by... Um, washing them quickly with Dawn soap and making sure that I get into the cuticles and everything and get them as clean and free of oil as possible. Uh, oil is the f enemy of Jamberry, so you do want to make sure as much oil gets off as possible. And then I shape them as I would normally for a manicure um, and I did that, sorry I'm trying to work with my camera here, um, and got them as clean as I possibly could and exactly how I want them to look so that um, after I put my jams on, I won't need to worry about trimming or filing. So I got those ready to go. Um, I did buff out my ridges, and then I also uh, used the Jamberry Strengthening Base Coat. Um, I love this product. It's one of my favorites. It is really great um, if you're growing out old gel um, manicures that then you had to remove and kind of ruined your nails <laughs> if you have little ridges and cracks and whatever in the ends. Um, that actually fills them right in. You would never know that I am still growing out that damage. So um, it really helps create a solid base for your jam. So I highly recommend it. Um, and so now I have my fingers prepped and ready to go. And now I'm going to hit them with a uh, alcohol pad. You can also just use rubbing alcohol if you have it. 
we also have an excellent um, Jamberry product, which are the nail prep pads. You can also purchase those. I do so much of this that um, the little alcohol wipes work great for me. They're also nice and portable. Um, so I'm going to do both hands, although I might hit this other hand again before I'm done. I'm not going to show you all my nails, obviously. Um, I'm just going to do one or two just to show you my method. So here we go. All right, so I'm going to start with my thumb. I've already looked at my wraps. I'm using Girl Talk today. And um, I've already figured out that this is the size that I'm going to need for my thumb. And the way I figured that out is just by eyeballing it. I kind of roll it over to the side, remembering that um, less is more when we're talking about Jamberry. You don't want to have so much of the material that it goes over the edge and touches your cuticle. So if you have a little tiny gap around the edge, that's okay. No one's going to see it. You're going to know, but they'll make your jam stick longer to have that little tiny gap. So don't worry about that. So if you're if you're in between two sizes and you don't want to trim, go down to the smaller size and use that one if you're in doubt because that they'll always look great. So I picked this one. And my nail bed is a little bit square. Um, a lot of people's thumbs are a little bit square. So as I take this off, I'm actually gonna give it just a little bit of a trim. So, usually for this, I, whoop, where's my tweezers? I don't know where my tweezers are, but this will work just fine. Um, or an orange wood stick would work just fine. Um, this up. I'm gonna stick my nail right there in the part that I know I'm gonna end up trimming off. See, it's okay. You don't wanna to touch them unless it's the part you know you're gonna trim off. Okay, I'm gonna cut that halfway. And again, I know I'm gonna end up trimming this off, so it's okay to hold on for just a minute. And then I'm going to trim, hopefully you guys can see that there, trim just the end off. So you can see, if you're looking at the back of the jam, see, it's a little bit square. Um, and that's what I'm gonna do. So. I'm going to take this one. I'm going to find the end of my thumb. I'm actually going to do it on this one. Okay, and now I've placed that. I don't know if you can see, but I placed it right above the cuticle. It's not on the cuticle. And right now I'm doing it cold method. That's another thing you'll see that's a little bit different um, than the Jamberry video. So I've placed it on. I'm going to just gently push it down and make sure that it's sized correctly. It is. You hit that right there. Okay, now I'm going to turn on my heater. And I've got my Jamberry heater, but um, you can use your blow dryer if you want, or there is such a thing as a um, paint removal heat gun. You can use that if you're into crafting. You can use a rubber stamping heat gun as well. Um, so that is not a problem. So I'm going to take this one and I'm going to just put it right in front of my heater. Kind of as long as I can stand it. Um, there's very little chance of overheating a wrap. Um, there's chance of overheating your finger. You don't want to do that. Um, so I'm just going to do this until I can't stand it anymore basically. And see how I'm kind of turning it under the heat. And right now that it's heated up a little bit, I take my cuticle pusher and go from the bottom to the top and out side to side. I'm taking a risk here and I'm doing my right hand <laughs> to show you that I think it'll look better for the camera. So that's why we're doing that. All right. So I have pushed down. I feel pretty confident that I have pushed pretty well. Now, I'm gonna heat that, that guy up again. And then I'm going to... Whew, it's getting hot. All right, now I'm gonna lift a little bit and pull down. I'm just gonna tug on it. Try and make sure, oh look, yeah, see I'm distorting the wrap a little bit, that's good pull it down just a little bit to try and make sure all those bubbles and right at the edge get stuck. Dug, 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 dug. All right, see, now it's got little devil horns. Um, so now I'm going to trim off any excess. This one I cut pretty short, so there's not much. And I'm not gonna go all the way down to the nail. I'm just gonna go a little bit above. Come on now. Fingers don't fail me. There we go. And then, and here's the trick. I'm gonna take a baggie. I'm gonna wrap my finger in this baggie. And I'm going to 
heat it up again. And what I'm doing here is I'm applying constant, even pressure to the whole surface of the nail. And it really helps, this baggy thing. Man, when I learned this, my whole jam life changed. All right, groovy. So there we go, and you see it's kind of curling under the bottom. I don't know if you can see that, but it's curling under the bottom. Okay, pressure one more time. And that is looking really good. That is stuck really well. So I'm gonna leave this part dangling. I don't wanna file that quite yet. If I file it now, the adhesive hasn't set quite. And so I don't wanna do that because it's gonna disrupt that edge surface. And really that's the part, you know, that's the most vulnerable part of the whole jam. So I wanna make sure that I get that nice and hot and nice and tight and then leave it. So we're gonna do the rest of our nails and then eventually come back and file. So I'm gonna do one more to show you um, how it goes. I'm gonna do my pointer on this hand too. Just so we get it again. All right. Let's see here. This finger's tricky for me. This one is a little bit in between. So I'm gonna go a little smaller. I'm gonna pick this wrap. Gonna touch that part, so I'm touching that. Come on back to me. There we go. Okay. So now let's see. Can you see? Can you see? Alright. Put that right in the middle. Hopefully not too far off center. Ooh, look at that, I got it just right. Okay. And I just push it down, but just a little, not much at all, because I really want to do the pushing down work after I've heated it. So I'm going to start heating it now. Ooh, hot! All right. Now, here comes the pushing. And really, the best way to do it is up the middle and then out to the sides. That way, you're following the natural shape of the nail. Okay. Feeling good about that? I'm gonna heat it up just a little bit more and I'm gonna do my uh, pull and stretch. All right, this one's got a lot of good room to hold on to it, so I'm really gonna go for it. Pull and stretch, pull and stretch. And then as you see it, if there are any little wrinkles or bubbles, you push them out. Pull and stretch. And you can actually kind of see the shape of your nail take shape underneath the wrap. You can kind of see it poke through. It's really neat. Wish I could show you. I don't think my camera is good enough, but I'll try to show you. Can you see kind of how you can see my nail through there? It's kind of wacky. All right, now we're going to heat it up a little bit more. One final push with the cuticle pusher before I do my bagging method. Just really want to make sure that I get all these little wrinkly doodads as far away as possible. Okay. And now this one, there's a lot of excess, so I'm going to trim a bunch off of this one. But still, not the whole thing. We want there to be just a little bit of edge at the top for baggy method. It really helps it. I'm going to save that little piece because... My little girl might really like that for a pedicure. Little teensy weensy toes. You can use all your scraps. It's pretty cool. Okay. And here I go with my baggie. See, I have wrapped it right around. Sorry, the light is terrible. I've wrapped it right around my finger. And then put it right here underneath my heater. As you can see, having a Jamboree heater does make this process a little bit more smooth, I will say. I didn't have a heater for my first few applications. Um, I was using the double boiler method in a rice bag, and it actually worked great. I mean, my jam stayed on just fine, um, but it did lengthen the whole process. It was not as fast and easy. So um, that is the benefit of the heater. But again, if you want to find out if you even like these things first, that totally makes sense. Um, or if you want to host a party and earn half off items, it's a perfect primo candidate for half off because 
you can't beat it for 10 bucks, that's for sure. All right, I have pushed, I have pulled, I have baggied, I have wrapped, and now we are cooling. So, wanna see that one up close too? So there you go. Do that magic thing that people do when they have YouTube videos and they want you to see something up close. All right, let's see. All right, gorgeous. So now, um, through the magic of television, uh, you will next see me when it's time to file them off. So, adios for now. Abracadabra. Check it out. They're all done. Hee. <laughs> okay. All right. So now is the fun part. Well, actually, I think all of it's the fun part. But this is the part where you're going to actually take off that very leading edge that's there. Now you're going to feel them. They're going to be a little firm. They're not going to be soft at all. Um, that is great. That means that they're nice and cool. So it's been about 10, 15 minutes. Basically, the time that it takes to do one hand is enough time for the other hand to dry. So I did the other hand and then waited for a few minutes. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pretty rough emery board. This is my Jamberry one, um, but anything with a pretty good grit on it. Um, and you're going to file the nail at a 90 degree angle straight down. And now don't worry at this point because you're not filing your nail, you're filing the jam. So you're not doing anything to change the shape of your nail at all. Okay. And do you see how that little piece came off? Can you see that? Let me see if I get it with the black background. There we go. That little piece just came right off. So that's what's going to happen. I like to call it the little smiley face just because oftentimes on me anyway, it'll stay attached on both ends, but it'll come off in the middle. So that little tiny piece right off there. And so now, as you see, it's, it's set. Um, and we're going to do a little bit more um, to really finish them off. But I wanted to show you how quickly this step really goes when it's time and they're ready and they're dry. There you go. Ta-da! So, I'm going to keep going. And really, I'm going at a 90 degree angle here. This is really important. You never want to go side to side. Um, you never want to go back and forth. You don't do that. You just want to keep pulling straight down until you see that little tail come up. And you don't want to pull on that little tail. That's important, too. You don't want to pull because that can uh, weaken the bond that it has on your nail. So you just keep going. Excuse me. Here, maybe I should do it this direction. I always forget about that finger. All right, still there. Okay, so this one, I'm not gonna keep going with my file because I can feel my nail um, going with it. What I'm gonna do instead is grab either my cuticle scissors or just a little pair of cuticle clippers. I love these little guys. Look, got it off right there. Okay, and then I'm gonna keep going for all of my nails. I'm not gonna do my other hand right now on camera just because, you know, boring. Hmm, but I will finish this hand off and then I'm going to show you the final final finishing techniques. Every once in a while I'll have to bring in the nail file sort of at an angle but I'm still pulling pretty much straight down. See that worked to get the little tail off. I'll do that on that end too. Alright, one more nail. Straight down. And you know, I'm not very firm when I do this. I've seen people do this and their little tails come off in like three swipes. I don't like to do that because I don't like the idea of taking off the edge of my nail. Um, so I tend to go more repetitions with a softer touch. This one's being a little bit recalcitrant. So we get our little nail scissors, or our little cuticle clippers, and all good and spiffy. All right. So my hand's looking pretty, almost done. I mean, really, it feels like I could probably just walk away like that. But what I'm going to show you next, really, I have found for myself anyway, lengthens the life of the jams by a long time. Um, so this is just a glass nail file. This I'm not even sure this one is glass, but it is one of these small metal style nail files. So it's really quite a fine grit. And so what I'm going to do on this one is I'm going to just take this up I like a 45 degree angle. So I really am cutting into it. Okay, perfect. Yay, nail. I want to show you what's happening here. Okay, let me see if you can see that. Can you see it all? Oh, you probably can't. There's no dark background, so it's really hard to show you. But 
there is a new little smiley face. That direction. There's a new little hub right here that I just squidged off. Anyway, that is just the clear coating on the wrap. So I'm not actually at this point pulling off any of the colored printed material. I'm just making a little bit of an edge on the clear overlay on the wrap. So, and what that does is if you think about it, if you've got a edge that is straight up against, it's gonna start pulling every time you touch it. But if you have something that's a little bit of an angle, things are gonna brush right off. They're not gonna have a chance to catch right there. They're gonna hit natural nail right at the edge, which is what you want. You don't want it to um, grab the jam. So that actually just gives a quick little um, edge to that nail, and it, it really does help. I Once I figured that one out, man, mine stay forever. So there you keep going, right there, all along the edge. See, I'm kind of, I'm, before I did it like this, this time I'm kind of coming in at a little bit of a sharper angle. I'm just taking off the very edge. Some ladies don't like to do this um, when the jam is very dark, when it's like a black or something that has um, the white underlay as, as a lot of jam berries do, but a black on the top because there's a, it leaves a little tiny white edge at the edge of your nail. Again, nobody's going to see it. Just you. You're the only one who's going to know, I promise. Um, but if you really don't like it, then you can hold off on those darker wraps. But I think it's worth it because not having to change again in a week or two weeks, maybe even three weeks, is worth it to me to have just a tiny little bit of my natural nail showing right at the edge. So here I go, I'm just gonna do that. And I'm gonna work that on every single finger and then eventually they'll be done and that's it. I didn't have to do anything special beyond that. So hopefully that was informative and helped you learn a little bit more about how to apply your jams in a way that will last and uh, work for all different shapes of nails. Um, and if you have any questions at all, please email me, get in touch with me, uh, let me know if you need help because that's what I'm here for. All right, thanks guys. Good night.